Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about Bitcoin, the beauty of mathematics, part 14. We do this video series on the first of every month to try to identify our level of overvaluation or undervaluation in the current Bitcoin cycle. Now, while I say Bitcoin, the beauty of mathematics, the analysis is actually run on the entire cryptocurrency asset class so we can better understand how the asset class moves as a whole rather than just Bitcoin. We know that altcoins can have a significant market cap when you combine all of them. So let's go ahead and jump in. Bitcoin, the beauty of mathematics, part 14. We started this series over a year ago. Now, again, the reason we talk about the beauty of mathematics is because the argument is that while Bitcoin um, behaves in a way that maybe we can apply some mathematical analysis to, you will find math represented in nature everywhere, right? Everywhere you can find math represented in nature. Therefore, the thought is, well, humans are part of nature. Therefore, our behavior maybe can be summed up in some type of mathematical concept. Now, I should say that the following analysis is nothing more than dubious, and I mean dubious, extrapolation. If that's not your jam, this video isn't for you, okay? So go forward with that in mind, okay? Just know dubious extrapolation. So if you're thinking, hey, this seems a little off, well, yeah, it's off because it's dubious, right? It's dubious extrapolation. This is the cryptocurrency market capitalization as a function of time. And we've updated it to August 1st of 2021. Today, the total cryptocurrency market capitalization of the cryptocurrency asset class is a very modest and humble 1.65 trillion, with our fair value logarithmic regression trend line coming in at an even more modest 784 billion. This represents an overvaluation from the fair value of approximately 110%. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, we can be overvalued for years. We can be undervalued for years. The overvaluation could go much higher than 110%. We most recently went up to 400%, um, or I should say we, we went up to 300%. Uh, back in in April and May. Before we had the dump back down, we went up to about a 300% overvaluation. And we speculated back then that we were ahead of schedule. If you look at the, the Bitcoin cycle ROI from bottom, from the halving, we speculated that, hey guys, we are in fact ahead of schedule. It would make sense for us to have a pullback in the market. We looked at this chart. And namely, we looked at these market cycle peaks, okay? We looked at these market cycle peaks and speculated, speculated that perhaps we'll come back up to this trend line one day. Will it happen in 2021? It very well could, although I sincerely doubt it, okay? So again, as we navigate the cycle, we will have an open mind if we're looking at it up here by the end of 2021, then I'm running for the hills and I'll let you guys know, right? We'll, we'll, we'll update the model on the 1st of September, October, November, December. Okay, so we're gonna update the model every month on the public YouTube channel. You'll be able to see where we are. And if we're chilling up here by, you know, by the, by the end of December or the beginning of January, I'm running for the hills with the profits, right? Running for the hills, okay? You know, cycle theory, whatever. If I'm wrong, fine. Do I think we're going to make it to that level by the end of the year? I don't, okay? I don't. Have I been wrong before in my life? Yes, <laughs> more than a few times. Um, so what do we notice when we look at this chart? Well, the first thing we should say is, again, that it shifted by 100%. So the overvaluation at 100% is actually at the fair value. So you have to remember it's shifted by 100%. The reason we did this was because we wanted this on a logarithmic scale. Therefore, if it's undervalued, it just goes above or below 100% rather than going into a negative number and then having to do some funky stuff with a logarithmic scale. So again, it's been shifted by 100%. So 100% represents the fair value, meaning if it's at 100%, it means the white line here is on top of the red line. So the, the total cryptocurrency market cap equals the fair value 
that's when it's at 100%. So when I said it was 300% overvalued, that's represented by 400% on this chart. And we talked about the idea of, well, you know, we had this here, and this was one third of this market cap. Okay, so this was about 2,100%, maybe, or maybe around 2,000% or so. This was around 700% or so, maybe a little bit less. And the speculation was, well, this was about one third of this one, maybe this is about one third. And we talked about this. Again, go watch the videos in January, February, March, April, and May. We speculated that, hey, we're ahead of schedule, maybe we're gonna have a double peak cycle, maybe we're gonna have some type of nasty correction, expect a summer lull at the very least. Now, at the very least, we have a summer lull. The question now becomes, is it time to go up now, okay? And honestly, I cannot tell you the answer to that question. If we get above the 20 week and then come back down and Bitcoin holds it as support for a few weeks or a month or two, then, I mean, maybe not even that long because according to you know, some of these shorter time frame models that put the peak by say September, I know a lot of people think September because of some other models, other people think December, in order for us to hit their projections by say September or by the end of the year, then we don't really have time to spend too much time just hanging out at the 20 week SMA because we have to start going up if we're gonna hit those, if they're gonna hit those predictions. So where I would say, you know, to, to be a little bit more confident about things moving up and maybe putting in a market cycle peak by the end of the year would be if we get back above the 20 week and then hold it as support for a little bit and then start moving up quickly. And I mean quickly, and we just blow past 60K, like no one cares, and we go to 70K, 80K, 90K, 100K, 120, 140, whatever. That would be the path to it putting in the market cycle peak this year, which would basically just be us going straight up. Okay, it would, it would essentially be going straight up, not unlike what we did earlier in the year, which really started back in 2020. So the speculation was, well, we had a pullback in 2013 and it was a double peak cycle, right? We had a pullback back there. And again, it was a double peak cycle. And then we said, well, if we have a pullback, how far down could it go? Like how far down could it go? Well, if you draw a line at where the current pullback has taken us, you can see that it's somewhat similar to where we went back to back in 2013. 2013 went a little bit further back, so maybe we have a little bit more room to go back, or maybe it's a wash and a wick and it doesn't really matter. Um, so when we look at this, we say, well, so far, the idea of a double peak cycle at the very least still seems somewhat plausible. And I would argue that we, you know, even if we go back to 50K, um, it, you know, we need to come back down to the 20 week and hold it as support before I feel like we have the confidence to push higher, okay? Now, given the fact that Bitcoin has moved up, um, you know, 10 days straight with its first red day today, obviously there's a lot of people being, there's a lot of really bullish people at this moment in time, okay? And if we had made this video a week and a half ago, down here at the bottom, the market would have been, the market sentiment would have been completely different, right? But now that we do it on the first of the month, we don't try, I'm not trying to time the releases of these videos. We do it the first of the month. We just look at this and say, well, I mean, you know, we came back to the level we went to in 2013. We, we warned that we are probably going to have a summer lull in the market and to expect a three to six month down period in the market. So far, it's been three months, right? So far, it's now been three months. We had May, June, and July. Um, we're going into August now. And I think the big question on everyone's mind, including my own, because I don't have a crystal ball, despite what it may seem, is, is this the breakout or is it a fake out? And if it's a fake out, then we have a lot longer to, to sort of move sideways, so to speak, in the sandbox. And if that is the case, then, you know, we could be range bound for a number of more months, okay? Now, what does that mean? Does it mean if we go to 45K or 50K, we're out of the woods? No, I mean, I would say, you know, if, if we're going back to 60K and putting in new all-time highs, then the, you know, then the lull in the market was on the lower end, say three months. If it's, if we end up, getting rejected by the 20 week SMA, if Bitcoin gets rejected by it, it goes back down um, and, and we have to spend a little bit, you know, a little bit longer uh, then you know, we'll probably go to the, to the other extreme, 
rather the, the shorter time frame, the longer time frame before before starting to tick back up. Because the, the argument back then was we won't have new all time highs in three to six months. Is that the downturn in the in the in the cycle will last three to six months? So if it's three months, then this is what we have. If it's six months, then we could have a few more months. I don't know. That was just the range I gave. So here we are. And if you look at 2013, we actually what we did was we had this sort of capitulation, and then we came back up and we just went sideways for a little bit. Okay, we just went sideways. Now, when you look at that, you might say, well, does that mean the price of Bitcoin was going sideways? Or does that mean that all of altcoins are going sideways? Well, no, because remember, the logarithmic regression line is a monotonically increasing function. Therefore, for us to carry the same level of overvaluation of approximately 100%, the total cryptocurrency market capitalization has to go up in value. Otherwise, the percent difference between the fair value, which again is monotonically increasing, is going to go down. So we have to go up steadily, at least commensurate with the 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 fair value otherwise the percent difference between the fair value and the market capitalization would actually go back down so now it's time to see does bitcoin have enough juice to just get back on track and and go straight up or are we in our sandbox a little bit longer that's the big question obviously people want to know the answer too now we are coming it seems to a critical point in the market obviously bitcoin has a lot of momentum right now the 20 week will be a big test we should know i think we should know soon enough to be completely honest i mean so then we looked at you know we looked at that and so the most bullish case which i have a hard time seeing myself is for us to just go straight up right we just go straight up we don't look back you know you you know you you just every single month we're putting in new highs essentially um, Bitcoin goes on a crazy rally, altcoins lag behind for a bit, and then when Bitcoin cools off, altcoins go crazy. And we hit the end of the cycle, we all, you know, we all sell, we all sing kumbaya, we come back again and do it in a couple years, right? That's scenario one. I'm highly skeptical of that scenario playing out. If it does, we'll cover it here, right? We'll cover it here, and if it plays out and we see it go straight up, I'll show you guys. Hey guys, look, I mean, this is, this is where it is. Right now, we're down here. In order for us to get to that level, we would need to go up several several multiples, okay? Several multiples to get up to that level. And this is 200% overvaluation, which again is 100%. This is like 900% overvaluation when you when you shift it, it's 800. So you're, you know, you're literally talking about um, 8X, okay? You're literally talking about 8X. And that's not of Bitcoin, that's of the entire asset class, okay? Um, so, we could take this path a little bit longer. It would maybe put the cycle peak out in the summer of 2022. This would be in line with a lengthened cycle, even though it would be on the shorter side of a lengthened cycle. Now, the reason the reason you might wonder, well, why mid the middle of 2022? You might say, well, that doesn't really make any sense. Why why did you pick the summer of 2022? Well, one reason is if you take the if you if you look at the time ratios, and we covered this in the last video. So if you want to actually see the math, go back to the last video on the Bitcoin Beauty of Mathematics series, part thirteen, and you'll see that ratio that we looked at. But if you look at the time it took to go from here to here, and then from here to here, and then look at the ratio from here to here, and then and then solve for x from the blue one to the red one, it would put the next peak in the summer of twenty twenty two dubious speculation right so dubious it's hard to even wrap your head around it right so it's very dubious speculation it would put it in the summer of 2022 then we say well what if it takes even longer like what if what if instead of going on either because i mean both of these paths right here essentially mean that bitcoin starts going up in the not so distant future right like and continues going up so the one that has this peaking in 2021 means we basically just have to go up now and, and we just keep going up, right? And, and you know, in in August, we're making it, you know, we're pushing 50K at least in, in September, maybe, I, I guess it also depends on, on whether you believe in diminishing returns because, you know, there's, there's lengthening cycles and then there's diminishing returns. And I've said for years, I believe in both lengthening cycles and diminishing returns. Now, a lot of people who follow, say, the four-year cycle theory, they're assume, they, they don't believe in diminishing returns, right? So they think 300K by the end of the year. Um, so we have to differentiate the two because one could be correct or neither could be correct or both could be correct. If 64K was the market cycle peak, then we had diminishing returns and no lengthening cycles. We would have had a shorter cycle. 
if if we put in higher highs either this year or next year then we could look at it and say well it's a lengthen cycle or sorry i should not say that if we put in higher highs this year or next year we can at least then say well it might not be diminishing returns because then we have to wait for whatever the market cycle peak is if we put in higher highs next year then we know it's a lengthen cycle and then we still have to wait to see what the market cycle peak is for it to not for it to be considered either diminishing returns or non-diminishing returns now when you talk about diminishing returns for bitcoin to some degree it depends on where you measure it from if you measure it from the market cycle bottom which was around 3100 we would need to go up 100x to not experience diminishing returns because the last market cycle bitcoin essentially went up 100x really it went up more than 100x if you measure it from the bottom of the wick that was well below $200 and we know it went up to around $20,000 or maybe 19.8k depending on what exchange you used so if that's the case then 100x is a conservative estimate on what it would mean to not have diminishing returns therefore 100x from the market cycle bottom would be a $310,000 bitcoin and if you think it's the four-year cycle then you're talking about it happening by the end of the year if you believe in diminishing returns then you might say, well, what about if you measure from the halving? Well, around the halving, the price of Bitcoin was eight to $9,000. And in order for us to not have diminishing returns, we need to not go up any more than 30X, because if we go up about 30X from the halving, then that's the same returns we saw from the last halving. And if you speculate on what that would mean for this cycle, it would mean if Bitcoin goes to around $250,000 as measured from the halving, it would not be diminishing returns. Therefore, I think the market cycle peak is probably somewhere between one hundred to two hundred thousand dollars. And if I'm wrong, I don't really care. I will I will happily wish anyone on the journey to three hundred K the best of luck possible. But just know that I'm not going to be putting my I'm not betting my own money on that. Um, so this would be both of these scenarios here would be fairly bullish. One of them would be more bullish than the other, okay? One of them means we essentially have to put in another run like we saw from October until, you know, until um, April. So if we put in an October to April move that we saw earlier this cycle, if we do that again, then congratulations, market cycle peak more than likely. If it takes us a bit longer and we, you know, we go up to the bull market support band, we spend some time, we have to test it as support or we get rejected at first, then we go back up another few weeks later, we move up, we go to 60K, we test it for a month or two and then break up again. If we do that, then it could take longer and maybe we're looking at a market cycle peak out in say the summer of 2022, okay? Then there's an even longer time frame, which would put us out in, as I said earlier, and maybe in 2023. And you might say, well, 2023 is getting really dubious, right? I mean, you're, you're talking about uh, another year and a half at the very least, right, to get to 2023. How do you arrive at 2023? Well, we've showed it before on the channel. I don't have the chart on me right now, but if you take the three last cycle peaks and plot them as a function of inverse time and then fit that and then dubiously extrapolate out and solve, it would put out the next peak in the summer of 2023. Okay, so <laughs> there's a range, right? There's a range there um all of it's very dubious of course no one actually knows what's going to happen the path to get to whatever we're going to is probably not going to be predicted ex you know extremely accurately by anyone if we go up you know if we go up by the end of the year um that would be quite interesting honestly if we if we make it up here by the end of the year i think that'd be quite interesting my speculation is that the longer it takes us to go up the further we will ultimately go okay so if, it, if we don't put in a market cycle peak until 2023, then there's still plenty of time to go back down to 20K or 30K. I mean, we could go back down to 30K easily, if that's the case, um, easily. Uh, if it's not the case, then we might not, I don't think we would have time. I mean, if, if, if we're gonna go up in 2021, we don't really have a lot of time to go back to 30K and then go back up, right? I mean, we just kind of, we gotta get going because we're already in, you know, we're already in the third quarter and we're in the second month of the third quarter. So, I mean, we only have a few more months, right? We have August, September, October, November, December. We have five months in order for us to, to put in the peak by the end of 2021. So my contention is, well, you know, if the market cycle peak comes in 2021, 
um, we first have to discuss is it going to be a link or is it going to be diminishing returns or non diminishing returns okay so if it's not diminishing returns and I've seen some people change their predictions on it not going to 300k but maybe it's going to go to 100k if you assume that 100k is the market cycle peak and then you say well after that we're going to have like a 70 or 80 percent retracement then you're basically saying you think it's going to go back to 20k um, if you think it's going to not be diminished and you think it's going to go to 300k and then we're going to get like a 70 percent retracement or something or an 80 percent retracement maybe you're looking at you know i mean maybe you're looking at um like you know in the 50k 60k range after after a major retracement so that could still be higher than the current prices right so if you if you don't believe in diminishing returns i'm trying to cover all the theories even the ones i don't believe in so that you guys have all the information and you can choose for yourself um so if you think it's going to go to 300k by the end of the year and and then it's going to have a crazy pullback you know similar to what we've seen in other cycles then you probably could assume that the current price of bitcoin at you know at forty two thousand dollars it you know could still be lower than whatever the next market cycle bottom is so you might want to consider that um and then if again if it's in 2023 if if the cycle lasts out until 2023 then we still have plenty of time, uh, you know, to to sort of hang out in our in our little sandbox. So let's continue. Let's um, look at some potential paths. OK, so we looked at these three paths and I also wanted to show what's another path. What's another path? Each cycle, in my opinion, will be very different from every other cycle. OK, the first cycle went straight up in a few months. The second cycle had a double peak cycle that took a little bit longer. Okay, this one just went up straight up, right? This one took about, what, two and a half years, I believe, um, or so. Uh, again, you're not looking at market cycle bottom here. This is the, the percent difference between the fair value and whatnot. This one was the four year cycle. And um, on this one, we just sort of, we went out, we tested the 20 week. We went up, we tested the 20 week over and over and over. So you essentially have straight up in a few months a double peak cycle and then a longer cycle characterized by constant tests of the 20 week SMA that took four years rather than just a few months like the first cycle. So then we look at this cycle and say, well, it never had to go straight up. It never had to test the 20 week consistently. Technically, it doesn't have to be a double peak cycle like this one. Maybe it's a triple peak cycle, right? Maybe we do something like that where we, you know, we come, we already came back down. Maybe we come up again by the end of 2021 and then everyone thinks it's the market cycle peak and we come back down and, you know, and, and everyone says, all right, we'll see you guys again in a couple of years. And then we go back up again and, and, and catch everyone by surprise. That's also a possibility. I think we need to consider all possibilities rather than acting deterministically about anything. Um, and hopefully this trend line will act as some gauge as to where we are within the market cycle. So when you look at this chart, what does that mean for being overvalued? Well, again, if you if you believe it's going to happen by the end of the year, you're looking at something like that. We got to go up and go up quickly and then we come back down. OK. If you think it's going to take maybe a little bit longer in line with a LinkedIn cycle, um, maybe the summer of 2022, maybe you're looking at something like that where we, you know, we go up, we come down, we test it as support or you know do something similar if you're looking at something even longer you're looking at something like that and that's the reason why i say i think the longer it takes us to move up ultimately the higher we will go so i've, I've speculated that i think the market cycle or the the peak of the entire asset class the total cryptocurrency market capitalization will probably be around 10 trillion around 10 trillion okay I don't know exactly where it's going to be. I've said, I think, between 10 to 13 trillion. So 10 trillion plus or minus a few trillion. And as, as I've always said, you know, as we as we go to sleep at night, we cannot help but wonder what's a few trillion among friends. Thank you guys for tuning in. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe, give the video a thumbs up. I will see you next time. Bye.